Hello and a very warm welcome to you all from St. Nicholas Church here in Broadway on this third Sunday after Trinity. Now, as much as the seasons have changed and we have left the season of Eastertide behind us, remember that every Sunday is a celebration of the resurrection. The wonder that we celebrate at Easter visits us again every week on a Sunday morning as we rejoice in God's glory at his wonderful work in our midst. And so let us pray. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. He has conquered death. Alleluia. He has triumphed over the grave. Alleluia. He has defeated hell. Alleluia. He has risen again. Alleluia. Christ is alive. Alleluia. A reading from the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right paths for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup shall be full. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Today's Gospel reading comes from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Jesus said to the twelve, Whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes the prophet in the name of a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person, in the name of a righteous person, will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, not one of these will lose their reward. Now, last week, we read a bit, for, bit earlier on in this narrative, and you may have noticed that I said it is a shame that they cut the narrative short where they did, because last week we had Jesus reflecting on the cost of discipleship. He was pretty much explaining to his disciples that what, what their duty meant to take up their cross and follow him. And indeed, we were left with in no doubt as to the tribulations which might face them in life, and that indeed being a part of the body of Christ, these tribulations were not going to be any easier. Now, today we have that reassurance that comes to bring this narrative to an end. Jesus tells us is that he explains to us what our rewards will be. And our rewards will be the consequence of what we do with our lives. I know so many of you over these difficult months have done such amazing things to reach out to those amongst you. One small 
example, is a person who has phoned another member of this congregation every single day purely to see that they're fine and well because they were aware that this particular person was living alone and may potentially not have had any other conversation that day. And so it is by these little things, these small acts of kindness, that those things which almost seem effortless to us at the time, that our reward will be relative to these things. It is by these things that we will be judged. As Jesus says, those who welcome me, welcome you, welcomes me. And as they welcome me, they welcome the one who sent me. So he's saying that if people go out to live lives as Jesus would have us live our lives, indeed, just as these people will welcome them, so too what we are representing is not just the power of Jesus' love in the world and his work in the world. We are being that. We are being the body of Christ in the world. But he's saying that we are even representing the power of our loving God from whom Jesus came to live with us on earth. And that is really quite profound, that what we do here on earth will affect all of those around us. Every single thing that we do on earth does have consequences, whether we like it or not. And one day we will be the people who will have to stand up and take account of the outcomes of our actions here on earth. And so I take heart that so many of us, so many of you out there, have been reaching out to others in love in these difficult times. And we know that these times may not get easier. In fact, it is quite plain that for our country, and as time goes on, potentially for many around us, many in our own midst, things will become more trying, more difficult. And they feel overwhelmed by that, but we must never forget that God is with us in all that we do. And as Jesus says that even a cup of cold water to one of the least significant, that act of kindness is noticed in heaven. So as we journey on together with one another and with our loving God, my prayer for us all is that we will take encouragement from this lesson that as much as the road may become very difficult for us at times and for those around us, it is not the, it is not the last story. That is not the end of it all. God knows what we are about and he acknowledges that. So we pray for each other as we journey on together, praying for God's blessing and God's strength on us all. Amen. You created all things, O God, and are worthy of our praise forever. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honour and praise. For you have created all things, and by your will they have their being. You are worthy, O Lamb, for you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed for God saints from every tribe and language and nation. You made them to be a kingdom and priests serving our God, and they will reign with you on earth. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honour and glory and might, now for and for ever and ever. Amen. You created all things, O God, and are worthy of our praise for ever. And so let us pray.
Risen Lord, we pray that you will uphold all who are down. Lord, have mercy. Upon the world's poor and the unemployed. Lord, have mercy. Upon the homeless and the refugee. Lord, have mercy. Upon the war-torn and the oppressed. Christ, have mercy. Upon the depressed and the despairing. Christ, have mercy. Upon the sinful and the sorrowful. Christ, have mercy. Upon the sick and the suffering. Lord, have mercy. Upon the diseased and the disgraced. Lord, have mercy. Upon the lonely and the dying. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death, to make all things new in him. Grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. May you find in Christ Jesus, risen from the dead, a sure ground for your faith, a firm support for your hope, the assurance of sins forgiven, and the life that is eternal, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you and those who you love, both living and departed, this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me this Sunday. And I look forward to being with you all again, at least in a virtual sense, next Sunday as I join you from Holy Trinity Church in Bingham. Until then, may God bless you all. <laughs>